Mr. Begley, members of the board, we do have several items for board discussion this evening. Our first item is in regard to some additional cost cutting measures that we've been exploring since our discussion <coughs> on February 16th. So the first one I would like to share, um, and you were already aware of this, but we didn't really discuss it uh, publicly. You're aware because we've, we've hired or you approved the recommendation to hire Chrissy Zaboral as an assistant principal at West Elementary. Um, that is uh, one position that we've decided to move forward with, not filling at the academy, that dean of students position. Um, rather than posting that position, we are moving forward without a replacement. Um, we recognize the fact that this will result in less administrative support at our academy, but we're putting some things in place to address that concern. So for example, there will be times in the future where uh, Mr. Jameson, the director, will be pulled out of the building to attend professional development, to attend monthly administrative meetings, so on and so forth. Um, there will also be times when Mr. Jameson is sick, and uh, or maybe some times when his family members are sick, which will require him to be out of the building as well. Um, when that occurs, we'll, we will need to pull administrators uh, from other buildings in the district to cover that building. I'll circle back and talk a little bit more in detail about that later on uh, this evening, but what I do want to say now is we, we recognize that as less than ideal, but that, that goes back to something that we've said in previous sessions is that all of these uh, decisions are difficult as we continue to make decisions about ways that we can cut costs and save money so that we can put a dent in the size of a future levy. The savings associated with that administrative reduction in salaries and benefits is $108,522. So that's, that's one thing I want to bring to the surface this evening. The next two uh, cost saving measures are directly related to technology. Uh, we do have Mr. McKinney and Mr. Jeffers here this evening, if you're wondering why they're here. They're happy to uh, answer any questions that you have if you want more detail um, about these two cost-saving measures. The first one uh, will begin this summer and is a district-wide transition from Windows laptops to Chromebooks. Um, this is something that we've considered in the past. Uh, while we will begin the transition this summer, there will be a delay in cost savings due to the need to purchase licenses, um, hardware, and some technical services. So after about one to two years, uh, maybe, maybe even sooner, it's hard to project, but we anticipate uh, this will save the district about $300,000 per year. Um, the next one that I'd like to talk about is also in the field of technology is, is replacing elementary laptops every other year versus replacing them every year, which is what we do now. Uh, right now we purchase new devices for the elementary students, uh, sixth graders and ninth graders every year. Uh, again, moving forward, those elementary purchases will now be made every other year, which means instead of purchasing 2,400 devices every year, we will buy 1,600 every other year. And that savings will result in a saving on average of about $125,000 a year on average. Uh, when, when we circle back, we certainly will welcome any questions, but we're just going to move forward through a couple other items and then we'll circle back uh, to be happy to answer any questions you have. This time I'll turn it over to Mr. Perry who will be talking about another reduction through attrition. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Mr. Begley, members of the board. Uh, recently, we've identified a position that we were able to absorb through attrition. Um, this is a custodial position at the high school. Our custodial staffing is calculated by building square footage. And when looking at the custodial staffing within the district and the square footage is associated, the high school was one school that we identified that we might be able to make a change. This took some time as we needed to develop the staff through training and also identify equipment that would, ass would assist with cleaning efficiencies. In addition, we wanted to make this change through attrition. And as of recently, a member of the custodial team at Fairfield High School has decided to retire. This allowed us to move forward. 
This position will be backfilled with the substitute to finish out the school year. Discussions have begun and will continue with the Fairfield High School custodial team, the maintenance <coughs> team, and the building administration to be sure that we have systems in place that the staff will not feel overwhelmed and that we will have the equipment and resources needed to perform at a high level. So um, this was also discussed with the union um, to make sure that they understood the thought process and the systems that were being put in place and trainings to make sure that their teams would continue to feel supported. And I must say that the, the union was understood, not happy, but <coughs> understood um, what situation we are currently in and uh, they were very supportive. So. Good. Thank you, Mr. Perry. Up next, I'll turn it over to Mrs. Lane who will be filling in for Mrs. Gilbert talking about a psych intern position. Thank you. Um, so every year, we have um, school psych interns <coughs> that may come to our district. And with that, there's a state grant that uh, we are awarded when we take on um, those individuals. Unfortunately, the, the grant does not cover the total cost of that uh, person. So we are proposing to reduce um, having those interns in our district, which for the one intern, for instance, this year we have one intern, it would save the general fund about a little over $13,000. So uh, Ms. Gilbert did bring that forward to us as a reduction, and that is our plan to not um, have any of those individuals in our district next year. Thank you, Ms. Lane. So based on the implementation of these additional cost-cutting measures, um, we anticipate saving about five, between $5.5 .5 and $5.6 million in the next four years. I, I do want to point out uh, we are not compounding the savings amount. So let me give you an example. If we uh, decide not to fill a position and we save $100,000, it will simply be um, noted as $100,000, a one-time savings, even though it's $100,000 per year. And that rings true with all of these other savings. You know, I mentioned 300000 a year. But it will, it will only be listed one time as a $300,000 savings, even though in reality it's much larger than that if you, if you extend it out how many every years you choose to do so. The reason for that is when you have a forecast and that, that item is not listed in the forecast at the beginning of the fiscal year, Ms. Lane, feel free to correct me if I'm not saying this right, um, you can't remove it from the forecast if it's not there to begin with, if that makes sense. So it's not there, so you can't take it back out. So you really, you list it as a $100,000 savings, even though over the course of five years, it's a $500,000 savings. It will wash out in the forecast, but you, you know, when we capture our savings, it's, it's not captured that way. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, I would like to make just a few more comments um, in closing, then we'll certainly be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, as we've mentioned several times, these cost-cutting measures create what I would call a, a less than ideal situation or situations across our buildings and our district. Um, some people may ask why we didn't make these cuts early, and that is the reason, because these cuts will result and less than ideal situations and learning environments. So would like to expand a little bit on the academy. And I, and I, and I briefly mentioned it a few minutes ago, but also think about um, it's, it's not ideal to pull administrators from other buildings to cover in another building for, for a number of reasons. Um, you are then pulling an administrator out of another building that building, as, as you know, all of our buildings, we have times where we have emergency situations. And our administrators are the ones who manage those situations. So you're, you're taking an administrator away from another building. You're taking one away from the academy. But I also want to talk about the fact that you're bringing someone into the academy who doesn't work there on a daily basis, who doesn't have the relationships with the kids and the staff, 
who doesn't who may not have an awareness about their protocols and procedures and and daily operations because that person doesn't work there every day um, but most importantly you lose a resource for kids so we've had conversations in the past about school resource officers and how school resource officers and guidance counselors that's that is another adult that kids can rely on because we have students who talk to our school resource officers who confide in them they may not have those same conversations with the teacher with an administrator or a guidance counselor because sometimes they just connect with the resource officer or they just connect with the dean of students or they just connect with the counselor so it's one less person who can touch a student in that way so um, again when I talk about less than ideal, that's, that's what I'm talking about. And, and that's, why, um, that's why those cost-cutting measures have put, been put, haven't been put in place. Because we've worked really hard to, to make our buildings you know, places full of resources, services, and supports for our kids. And so, um, but again, it goes back to none of these decisions are easy. But if we, if we truly want to put a dent in the size of a levy, then those are the kinds of decisions that we have to make, and they're not easy ones. Um, the last comment I'll make is just looking towards the future. Uh, Mrs. Lane will be giving her next five-year forecast on May 18th. Uh, between now and then, our team will continue to have those um, discussions about potential cost-cutting measures. Uh, we'll continue to look at opportunities to reduce staffing through attrition. Uh, it is my expectation today to come back to the board, maybe even as early as May 18th, if not probably the first meeting in June, and engage in some discussion about our intentions regarding placing a levy on the ballot. Uh, we want to wait till that May forecast. There's some uncertainty out there with funding, um, and we don't want to uh, make some decisions um, we we, we want to wait until the dust settles, so to speak, till we have a clear idea of what we, we can expect as far as funding is concerned. So um, that's what we're looking at in the future. Of course, things can change at any time, but that's where we are as of March 16th. So if you have any questions, uh, members of our team will be happy to answer um, any of those questions that you may have. Questions? I appreciate the, the waiting till the April deadline to make it the ass as minimal as possible um, so that that's good we want to do it the right way and I think we're, we're doing it the right way <clears throat> those cost-cutting measures are unfortunate for the every reason that you mentioned the kids suffer and that's 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 not the point that we want to we want to have as a school district but um, we'll just have to see how far that can go once we get there but yeah. we're doing what we can um, Jeff and you guys is the, the Google versus the the windows is there a, what's what's what would be the biggest difference as far as the teaching tool part of it for the kids or <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think that was the question I had too, mr. Jeffers and and there must have been a reason we picked the Windows systems over Chrome just a couple of years ago when we started at one to one it seems like everybody uses Windows anyway then you got Mac and now Google's in play so sure sure cool. um, as far as the districts in southwestern Ohio, 90% of them are using Google at this time okay. anyway. Um, when we made that choice several years ago to go with Windows devices over Google de devices, there were um, several different factors in play. But um, as far as the student experience with this change, it will be minimal. And, and many students won't even realize. Um, our, our teachers are already using Google tools, um, the Google Workspace, Google Classroom with their students on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, mainly the difference the students will notice is um, that their boot up screen will be a, a Chrome operating system screen instead of a Windows yeah. screen. Um, it's still primarily a, a, um, an internet device in terms of the work that they do is, is through the internet. Um, one of the changes from years ago, um, Google has gotten much better over time at allowing uh, folks to work offline, meaning they don't have to have internet access to work in the Google world. Okay. When Google first came about, it was all 
browser base and internet base and you had to be connected. Got to have a Gmail. Um, <laughs> that's not true anymore. Right. Um, there are switches that teachers can toggle to allow students to cache their, their work in the memory on the device when they're within the network in, in the district. Okay. But then when they go home, they still have access to the, those files because they're cached to the machine instead of in, in the cloud. I got you. Uh, so Google has come a long way yeah. with that. So the students, they, they won't hardly notice any, any difference at all. Okay. Um, teachers will still have Windows devices. They'll still have all of the same tools that they have now. Um, and students will still have access to the Microsoft cloud devices, so they still have Word and Excel and PowerPoint, just the web versions of those. So it will be minimal um, to the student experience in terms of the change of hardware. Okay, <clears throat> good, excellent, thank you, appreciate it. The main reason we, we started out with Windows um, was mainly because we had probably 3,000 of those devices already out there. Yeah. Um, so we just continued down the path. The, the cost difference at that time was minimal, the difference between the two. So we continued down that, that path. Um, COVID hit and our Windows device prices have continued to grow up. That's and good, yeah. the Chrome uh, prices have stayed about the same. So. Okay, good. And then Chrome, um, Google has advanced a lot in the last few years with the offline things that Mr. Jefferson talked about and other things. That's the reason of the change now. Okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Sure. Don't go away. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Smith talked about slowing the replacement cycle down for hardware at some of our younger grade levels. And I know we've talked specifically about how tough the kids can be on the units. Is the replacement screens and other things that we need to do, are those costs minimized? Will we, will we still see cost savings if we do that? Yeah, so um, costs are starting to come down. We had some supply chain issues during COVID. Um, that's getting better. Um, the reason we chose the elementary, so when we initial, initially came to you with the plan, we were gonna replace third grade, sixth grade, ninth grade every year. It's turned out we do sixth grade, ninth grade, and then a grade level in the elementary. It's not necessarily a third grade, it's one of the grade levels that we see the best benefit. <coughs> the difference between the K-5 atmosphere is the machines are on a cart, they stay on a cart. So at the end of the day, they stay at the building, they don't leave the building. So we're seeing a lot less breakage in the elementaries. So after we've had a couple years of, of seeing where the breakage happens, we're not seeing as much breakage happen in the <coughs> levels. Um, a, they're not using them um, all day long like they are in the middle schools and the high school, and they're not taking them home. So we've, we've seen some cost savings that we believe we can, we're going to try uh, to go every other year on purchasing those. That makes a lot of sense. I hadn't thought of that, but not dragging them onto the bus and off, uh, yeah. Backpack sitting Through on the snow. Right. And rain. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Well, like I said, we, we'll try it, and that's what we've done. We've tried it. If it works, we, we flip on a dime. We've been very good at that. If it doesn't, we stop and do something else. We have to pivot on a daily basis. So. Yeah, yeah, and you guys do a great job with it. And, and I think everyone would agree that one-to-one -one technology has been one of the biggest success stories we've had here over the last couple of years. Yeah. It's really impacted student learning. Agreed. Thank you. Do you have any other questions? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. Our next item for board discussion is in regard to the discrete math pilot. So at this time, I'll turn it over to Mrs. Ogg. Thank you, Mr. Smith, uh, Mr. Begley, members of the board. I am happy to share with you that the Fairfield City School District was selected to be a part of the discrete mathematics pilot for the 23-24 school year. So um, as you might remember, we did go for this last year to be part of year one. Um, but didn't get it, but reapplied this year and, and we're finally in. And I found out they only picked five districts last year throughout the state anyway. So, you know, we've really felt shunned and maybe we shouldn't have felt, felt so bad. <laughs> um, so the discrete math computer science course uh, is an Algebra two equivalent course uh, like mathematics, modeling and reasoning that we also offer. And just remember that what we mean by that is that it's equivalent in rigor, not necessarily in content. So according uh, to the ODE course overview, 
Uh, students in the discrete math course can expect to explore a variety of discrete math topics through a mix of hands-on classroom activities, traditional mathematical logical reasoning, and interactive computer science activities designed for students with no prior coding experience. Topics include such things as computational thinking, computer logic, game theory, probability, connectivity, and cryptography. Um, all topics emphasize logical reasoning, proof, and communication with precise mathematical and computer science language. So we are very excited uh, to be able to offer this opportunity to our students. Um, I asked the high school to tell me how many uh, students were enrolled as of right now, and we have 54 students who have signed up so far, and we're not quite finished scheduling, so that number could increase a bit. So just very happy to share that news with you, and that concludes my item. And, and our teaching staff can handle that curriculum? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so um, probably next steps for us, you know, we had to accept, and then um, in doing so, we are um, committing to sending our teacher or teachers, however many we need to teach the course, um, to go through training um, and professional development starting this summer, and then that support continues on um, through the first year of the pilot as well. That is absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, I'm just so thrilled because I remember when we didn't get it because <laughs> we talked about this um, program before and I think it's a great opportunity. I think it um, will give our kids basically a different look at math mm -hmm. and I think that's really encouraging. So very happy for, for the district. So happy that you pursued that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, and students can take Algebra 2, and then they can take MMR or discrete math um, as a fourth year math or an additional math course as well. And so that mathematics <coughs> modeling and reasoning course that we have is uh, becoming more and more popular every year. Okay. Very good.